Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Friday broadcast here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you've had a great week. Well, my Bible is open to the very last chapter of the book of Ruth, and today, Lord willing, we'll complete our study through the book of Ruth. It's taken us a while, but God has, uh, I hope, encouraged your heart with it as he has mine. So if you can, reach over, get your Bible, join me in Ruth chapter 4. I'll begin to read at verse 13 here in just a moment. Along with my Bible being open, I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Now, a gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I'm going to highlight one of our tracks here, and then I will be trying to verbally arm twist you to to get from us a complete sample packet, which contains one each of all of our English tracks. I want to send it to you. It's a free gift. Please have pen and paper ready so that we can send that to you so you can give to us your name and address as you jot down our contact information. Well, years ago, a man who has taught me, frankly, a lot about how to live by biblical principles, he would often say this to me, wait for God to write last chapters. Now, what did he mean by this? Well, he meant that I was just to obey the principles found in the Word of God, even when the situation I was in seemed hopeless and lost. I was to keep obeying by faith what God said and wait for God to work things out for his glory and for my good. Well, that statement has aided me more times than I can begin to count. Perhaps right now you're in a messed up situation. Maybe you caused the mess. No, whether you did or didn't, here is my exhortation to you. Obey the word of God and what you know to be correct, even if it doesn't make sense to you in your human peanut butter brain. But then wait for God to write the last chapter. Here in Ruth chapter 4, it's a prime example how God writes last chapters chapters, wonderful, glorious last chapters. Get your Bible and join me there, please. I mentioned the gospel tracks a moment ago. The one in my hand right now is entitled Peace in Terminal Illness. Peace in Terminal Illness. We have left the name of the author on this track. It is the founder of this ministry, Dr. Paul Levine. He went to heaven because he had cancer. In the last years of his life, he endured a great deal of pain, but a great deal of peace because he knew that to be absent from the body was to be present with the Lord. Here is how this gospel track begins. It says, on June 29, 1995, a doctor said to me, you have cancer. It's spread to your spine and ribs. So I know how you feel if you have a terminal illness. He goes on to explain in here how he dealt with it, but then he lays out with such clarity how to be ready to meet Jesus Christ as your Savior, not as your judge, but as your Savior. You see, You need to grasp that Jesus died on the cross to judge your sins, to pay the sin debt, to be judged on your behalf. But if you do not receive him, then you're going to stand before him and he will be your judge. But if you receive Christ as your savior, you can stand before him. He'll be your savior. And you can hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. It's a great gospel tract. Every family I know of has been touched by a terminal illness. Let's minister to people in that state peace and terminal illness, just one of the 40 tracks in the sample packet. Be ready when my announcer gives the contact information or just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. 
All right, if your Bible's open, chapter 4 of Ruth, beginning of verse 13, the Bible says this, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife, and when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which has not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age, for thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. And Naomi took the child, laid it in her bosom, and became nursed unto it. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There's a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Stop, please, right there. Now, these verses here, verses 13 to 17, are the second section of the fourth chapter. I've titled this section this way, Rest Secured. Rest Secured. Ruth and Naomi find hope for the rest of their earthly lives because Boaz marries Ruth and she has a son. Here are my three main points for my outline for verses 13 to 17. Are you ready? We talked yesterday about verse 13. There, we see a blessing of a womb. Blessing of a womb. In verses 14 and 15, there's a blessing of the women. The blessing by the women. And in verse 16, there's a blessing of a work. And finally, verse 17, the blessing of a word. And that word is the word obed, which means servant. Now, when the baby comes here in this chapter, the women did then what women do today. They got together and they celebrated the baby. Who knows? What's said here in verses 14 and 15 may have happened at a baby shower for Ruth. Now, that really is kind of Mark Smith's uh, imagination going haywire here, but who knows? Maybe. Well, these women bless God. They bless Naomi, and then they bless Ruth. They bless God for his gift of a son. Uh, The kinsman here that will take care of Naomi uh, for the rest of her life into her old age. The women then pronounce a blessing on Naomi in verse 14. They ask for her grandson to become great, to be famous, a person everybody will know because of his goodness. Then the women bless Ruth. They declare her grace and kindness that she has shown to Naomi is wonderful and marvelous. They mention the seven sons. Well, the number seven was a number of completeness and perfection. And even if Naomi had seven sons to care for her in her old age, Ruth superseded all that they could have possibly done themselves. Now, this lady, Ruth, was some kind of lady. She is a picture of a virtuous woman we read about over in Proverbs chapter 31. Well, the blessing of work, the next section of my outline, is seen in verse 16, and there Naomi, who had no future, now gets to help care for the child who provides her a future. But then we come to verse 17, and we see the blessing of a word. And that word was the name of the baby, the name Obed. That name of the Ruth's son. But notice it was the city women who named the baby. How weird is that? Well, so tremendous was God's grace and goodness to Naomi through Ruth and Boaz that no one could have missed it. The transformation from the death condition we see of Ruth and Naomi in chapter 1 to the condition of life in chapter 4 is so pronounced that it was a testimony to all, and they lift up and they say, God has shown his grace to this family. The very last section of the book of Ruth is verses 18 to 22. I did not read them. I will not read them. But I've titled this section, The Royal Story. The Royal Story. And it's a royal story, obviously, because King David comes through the line of Boaz and Ruth. Now, remember, I began the broadcast by talking about how God writes last chapters. Well, here in verses 18 to 22, there are three very unique people listed in this genealogy. They are Perez or Perez in verse 18, Salmon in verse 20, and Obed in verse 
21. All three of these men came from a mixed blood line. All had Israelite fathers, but they had Canaanite mothers. One came because the mother played the role of a prostitute. The second came from a mother who actually was a prostitute because Solomon's mother was Rahab the harlot, whose story is found over in the book of Joshua. And Obed, the third one here, the son of Ruth, he's a person that was born to Ruth, and she was a Moabitess woman, a cursed woman according to the law. Now, whether you're listening right now to me at home or in your car or at work, please, please listen and remember what I'm about to say. This genealogy, this royal story puts on full display how God stepped over custom, stepped over tradition so he could provide Israel her greatest earthly king. King David came through a messed up family line. The father of Perez had to openly repent of his sin. Perez got into the family line because he stole his brother's birthright. Go back to Genesis 38 and read that story. Solomon got in because his very immoral mother believed the truth about the God of the Bible and she sought his grace and found it. Obed gets in because his Gentile mother heard that there was bread in Bethlehem. And so she sought the the grace of God and found the bread by which she could live her earthly life. Do you know where I'm going with this? What does Jesus call himself? I'm the bread of life. Oh, what a picture here. Ruth, the cursed woman who had no rights to the goodness and the blessings of God, heard that there was bread in Bethlehem, and so she went and sought God. Ultimately, you know that Jesus, our Messiah, was born into this tainted family line. Oh, the people who make up this genealogical record, they're all tainted, yes, but God by the Holy Spirit, and we're told in Luke chapter 1 and 2, God by the Holy Spirit used this line to produce our sinless, untainted Savior, and we through him can be saved from our sin-tainted eternal death and hell. We can be saved, have our soul cleansed, and declared a child of God. Now tell me, please, how messed up is your life right now? Well, God transformed the messed up lives of Ruth and Naomi. He did this when they moved to Bethlehem. You, friend, if you've never been saved from your sin, move to God right now. Move by means of a heart broken over your sinfulness. Move by means of a heart of faith in what Jesus has done at Calvary's cross when he died for you in your place. He died to transform your sinful life into a life of grace and hope. There's hope in Christ, but you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must come to him in childlike faith and say, Father, I'm a dirty, rotten sinner, but Jesus died for me, and I believe that saved me from my sin for Jesus' sake. You do that, and God will abundantly pardon and transform your life. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.